Hey everyone, it's James from Frisian's Knives here. Today we're going to prefabricate the tube steel required for our Houseworks Generation 4 2x72 belt grinder. You can see his YouTube page here, and this is his design. I always need to make that clear. But I'm doing my part to bring this to Australia and let everyone access it here because it's a great machine. You're going to hear from Brian Housework just in a second. Here he is. He will describe everything for you better than I can. Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework. And today we are going to be building the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder Generation 4. Now, if you're not familiar with the Revolution project, um, I'll put a link right up here so you can follow along or go back and look at the Genesis. Uh, but it's actually a 2x72 belt grinder project that we developed about a year ago right here on YouTube. And then over the course of the last year, we brought it to production with your help. So I just wanted to say thank you for following along and supporting my work and doing all the things you guys do so I can do the things I do. If you want an amazing video that shows you the nitty gritty details of this entire build, then I recommend you go check out Brian Houseworth's channel and his videos that he has on this machine. Uh, that's actually why I've avoided to make any videos uh, showing how this goes together, because I know that my methods are rather uh, more similar to a Neanderthal <laughs> than his, you know, so it would be better for you to watch to see how this is put together from the man that builds it himself. Uh, regardless of that though, here is a quick sort of snapshot of everything I do to prefabricate the tube steel within this belt grinder kit. Okay, first up we have a tube steel that's all cut to size. This is how I provide it for the kit. And then next we start with the aim to finish. The first tip of the video is to use two flat surfaces when you're trying to find the center point on tube steel. It makes just measuring anything a hell of a lot easier. These are 12 millimeter plates, so I know I just have to add 12 mil to the measurement on the calipers. I found the center line, so all I need to do now is tap it, which you see me doing right here. And then after this, I'm going to get to work drilling my pilot hole, which is, you know, pretty important so you don't break any drill creases. And then I'm going to step up the drill bits into a M8, which is perfect for tapping for 10 millimeter thread. Now you see me right here, I'm using a four millimeter and then I've gone on to the eight millimeter. Yeah, it's not too uh, hard at all. Now this, I picked up from Brian Housework. He uses his mill to make sure that the thread has been started perfectly straight. I use my uh, drill press and it works just as well. And it's just a really easy way to start off without much worry and screwing it up. So you don't want to have a thread that's angled the wrong direction. Now this is something not many people would recommend. But right now, I tap my holes with a plumber's wrench. And you know, it works really well. The end result is definitely a clean, perfect hole, and I like the leverage. But if you have another tool, or the proper tool to do this, I recommend that you use the actual tool. Now that that's taken care of, I just want to get the, uh, the burr off of the top, and then I want to tackle the weld seam on the inside. When you're using a standard file to get rid of the weld seam, it does take a while, so I'm not going to film the entire process. I'll just jump to when it's completed. And bam, just like that, it is finished. <laughs> I wish that's how it actually worked. It wasn't too hard, I just had to sand the tube that sticks inside it and get rid of the weld seam in the 50x50 tube. Alright, so these are the receiver tubes. Now these, I think, are the easiest parts but they are also kind of the most consuming parts, especially if you're just using a standard file, which I am in this video. Uh, you can get yourself a file sander, and that'll make this job a hell of a lot easier. I have one of those, but I'm not making use of it in this video. So it's just the same as any uh, accurate hole. Measure it out twice, and then you tap, and then what you need to do is drill your pilot holes, and after that's done, I have to thread them to M10. So the last hole that I'm going to drill them to is going to be M8 again, 8mm. All 
Alright, so now I'm using that trick again to make sure I get the thread nice and accurate. And then I'm going to use the plumber's wrench just like before because it's the best thing that is leverage in the workshop at the moment. So it's doing the trick pretty nice. <laughs> and then after this, it, it looks nice and flush. You know, they are uh, properly tapped. Uh, the next process is the time consuming part though, that's when you actually want to file out the weld steps. You know, so right now I'm just getting all of the rust and everything to the other sides, but the weld seam really hard to taste the most time, as you will see. Alright, so I sped that process up by about five times, but you can see that it telescopes beautifully. So that's exactly what we want to see. Those procedures are done. Here is the tracking filler. Okay, so I already measured this out, and I measured it out according to the PDF document that I got off Ryan Housework. You guys can buy them off of his website as well. In fact, I'll show you how. I just Googled house made file set. I click on the first link and then on the front page of this beautiful website you just click on plans and there you go if you want to build this yourself and you don't want to go through a distributor you can just buy the uh, plan sets right there and build it with the scrap you have around or you can buy all the parts yourself you know as long as you measure twice this step is relatively easy I ended up losing some footage unfortunately, so I didn't get to show you the entire boring process of angle grinding, but uh, you just have to be patient and know that there is no race apart from with yourself. And if you go slow, you'll be able to do this nice. So you will see that next time. I want to warn you at this stage to be bloody careful with the angle grinder, it's one of the most dangerous tools in the shed. And here we have one shiny track. Now we are up to the tracking arm. All you have to do is, like I've said, measure your lines twice uh, and then your holes will be where they need to be. Here you see me stepping up way too quickly. I've gone from the M4 to the M8 straight away. It worked fine, but I don't really recommend you do this. I reckon you should step up slower. Um, you know, I do as I say, not what I do. <laughs> I don't want to cause someone to screw up.
up next are the risers. These parts are just as simple as the other parts. It just requires two 20 millimeter holes. Uh, so I'm just gonna measure it out, tap it, then I'm gonna step drill it up to the 20 millimeter. Yeah, nice and easy. Uh, some might realize that in this video I don't show the process of rounding that uh, the tip you see at the top, you know, the revolutions when they tilt usually tilts around a circular surface. Um, but this works just fine because they get a free cut to the of the sides. Uh, you know, for any of those that noticed, I thought I'd provide an explanation as to why I'm not doing it in this video. <laughs> The reason I drill the, uh, the hole that's below this M20 second is so that I can use one of the brackets to make sure that everything's spaced perfectly. It means when I line everything up I have that extra level of assurance so that I know everything is going to be nice and flush. I almost forgot to show the process of drilling the plate and arm work rest. That's why these arms look slightly different, not as decorated. <laughs> exactly the same as every other time I've said it. As long as you measure these holes right, and tap right, step up slowly, and then, you know, it, it, it comes together. I probably seem to be simplifying it, or maybe this really is just that simple, but I want it to be as comprehensive as possible which is why I've filmed every part of the process so that, you know, if anyone is building one of these grinders or grinder themselves, they can just pause where they need to. And, you know, hopefully I might help someone. This front hole on the plate and arm, it has to be tapped all of the way through. This plate and arm can be a bit trickier and that's why I use this bracket to measure it. I also double check the measurements straight after using the bracket to make sure that it is correct. You know, so I am measuring twice with this one. <laughs> I was definitely pushing it a little bit uh, with this pilot hole, but it worked out alright. And finally, we're on the last home stretch. This is the home run right here, these holes. I was holding my breath, you know, because nothing had gone wrong. I was kind of expecting this to go wrong just because of Murphy's Law. But it worked out all right. The second hole back allows a 10 millimeter to slide through and the hole at the front allows 10 millimeters to rest. And there you go. 
our tube steel has been prefabricated and it wasn't too hard at all. If you like this, follow Christian's Knives on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in the belt grinder, you can buy it here in Australia from me, Christian's Knives. Or check out Brian Housework. I'd also encourage you to follow him on Facebook and find his website, subscribe to him on YouTube. Alright, have a nice night everyone.